Hello there everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Josepha, how are you doing today beautiful? Welcome to this video for Dissidia Final Fantasy Opera Omnia and in today's video I'm going to be trying to make a beginner's guide to this game because a lot of changes have happened with Dissidia Final Fantasy Opera Omnia over the years and we're getting quite a large influx of new players whether it be like refugees from a different game or perhaps they've never played anything like this. They've heard that Dissidia is extremely generous as gacha games go and I'm here to tell you all about all of that stuff and also use a brand new account to show you what sort of steps you want to be taking in the early stages of playing this game and hopefully learn some of the benefits about playing it too and what fun you can have. So if you'd like to learn more about Final Fantasy Dissidia Opera Omnia and how to go through the early stages of it, then stay tuned and keep on watching. Now before we get started, if you'd like to come and join me as I play Dissidia Final Fantasy Opera Omnia on Twitch or any of the other games that I play, I play a lot of uh, Final Fantasy XIV, other Final Fantasy games, we're going up with Monster Hunter Sunbreak stuff as well, lots for you to come and join in with if you'd like to come and join me over on Twitch, do click on the link in the description box below and click that follow button if you want to come and chat to me or have any questions of your own about this particular game. And also, I do shout out one of my patrons over on Patreon, which is my members only website, where lots of people can get lots of different benefits, including private streams, video chats, uh, all sorts of bits like the title cards that I make for people. There's lots of things for you to benefit from, so if you'd like to consider supporting the channel further, or that you've benefited from this in some way, then perhaps consider clicking on that link in the description box below as well. But today's shout out is going to go to Luca Yasha, who is one of my ultimate tier patrons, and was actually their birthday last week. So I want to shout out Luca and wish you a very happy birthday. Thank you ever so much for all the support you've given me, and that goes out to all of my other patrons as well. And most importantly as well, don't forget to check out all of the resources that I talk about in this video as well as all of the other content creators out there. The community for this game is wonderful. If you ask questions people will be more than happy to help you. I have a list of uh, content creators here as well as online resources that I use all the time. As a matter of fact I'm going to give a special shout out to Tom Breed Troop now because their beginners, uh, beginners guides on their website is absolutely fabulous and I would not be surprised uh, do not be surprised if you see that on this video as well. So before we go into the actual tutorial section of the game, as you can see here, I'm actually using a brand new account to showcase what sort of things to expect as you go into the beginning of the game. But I'm going to condense it as best I can to try and keep the video a decent length and explain things at speed. But before we do that, I do want to explain some of the benefits to starting DFFOO and the reasons that I personally really enjoy it. So going over those... First of all, I've played a lot of gacha games in my time. Very few things in this particular game require stamina. So there's no timer really that you have to worry about where you're just not able to play the game for a certain period of time. So unlike those other gacha games, outside of time limited events, you're actually very, very able to just play the game at your own pace without worrying about it. Secondly, this game is significantly more generous in terms of resources, giving resources, available permanent resources, all sorts of stuff, content in general. There is tons of content for new players that will all give you resources that you would pull for. Honestly, there have been times where I've considered starting the game again just because of how many resources are available just in the permanent pool of resources. It's crazy. Then another thing that a lot of people will like to hear is that all of the characters in Dissidia Final Fantasy Opera Omnia are free to acquire. You get them just as you're playing the game, various different ways. However, it's their weapons and their gear that require gacha elements. So just be aware of the fact that this is still a gacha game and you will need to use those elements in order to enjoy it fully. Just be aware as well that it's unlikely that you will use a character if you don't have all of their gear. But don't panic, there are lots of characters that are available and you can use this as a good time to discover new favourites just as I've done. And then lastly, the story in this game is very, very quaint in, in that it's very fan y So if you're a fan of Final Fantasy, then you'll love seeing some of the interactions between all your favourite characters, the worlds they've inhabited. I have a big, big fandom for Final Fantasy V and IX and early on there's an interaction between Faris and Zidane that I really enjoyed. And there's lots of nice little bits and pieces with that, so let's get stuck in and see what we can find with the game. So the first thing that you're going to come up and see here is the actual in-game tutorial. So we're not going to go through all of this because the game is going to teach you the majority of the very, very basics of the game. However, what I will say and the re part of the reason that I'm making this video is what you see in some of these fights 
isn't exactly what you're gonna see when you actually start playing the game. This is a tutorial that is based on the first like day that this game came out and it's four years old. Gacha games typically certainly JRPG styled ones have a tendency to power creep very quickly and you will definitely notice that with a bit of a shock to the system if you're not prepared for it. So normally speaking if you're familiar with the PSP Dissidia games or NT bravery damage is dealt so that you absorb bravery by dealing bravery damage so you absorb it and, and, and that value is how much damage you will deal with an HP attack. So that's the very, very basics of it all. There are obviously skills that come into it. There's obviously other bits and pieces that like change how much bravery damage you deal, how many times you deal bravery damage, how many times you deal HP damage. I'm just covering the very, very basics now because it's going to be important later. So once you've done a few of the tutorial missions, you'll get to maybe five fights that will take you through the basics of like launching, what basic skills look like. You'll get a first new character, which will be Saz here, and you'll be given a ticket to get a free five star weapon. Unfortunately, on its own, that five star weapon isn't going to do a lot for you. So from this point onwards, this is the point where you can do re-rolling. So if you've not heard of re-rolling in a gacha game before, it is restarting your account repeatedly while there is a generous offer on or something like that for the game so that you're able to get what you want without having to spend resources because you go in, roll for the thing. If you didn't get the thing, delete your data and start it again. I did actually make a re-roll uh, guide when the game first came out four years ago. Um, so I will leave a link in the description box for that because the methodology of re-rolling is still very much the same. So if you want to know more about that, you can click on that. Just know that obviously the desired gear and stuff like that is very much outdated at this point. But this is the first point where we can exit out to the menu and the draw system. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to the draws here because we have some free draws here that you're able to do. So this one here is called the Start Dash banner and this banner is available for all new players for their first week of play. It features Cloud, Squall and Lightning which are all obviously fan favourite characters but at the time of this video's being released I wouldn't recommend pulling on this banner any further than the initial free multi draw. So we're going to do that and we'll see if we get anything out of it and hopefully I can explain some nice stuff from it. So you'll get either a blue orb, a gold orb, a purple orb now or a lightningy crackly thunder orb and that will denote like the highest rarity thing you have in theory. It can actually ding up from that and you'll see what your first multi draw will look like. So you'll get three star and four star weapons here, none of which are useful to you. You'll either use them to augment your existing gear that's useful or sell it. it you have no worries about selling this kind of gear. Don't worry about that. So we got a weapon here for lightning and it's quite a good one as well. So what I will do here is instead showcase to you after the fact that the fact you get characters as you pull for them as well. You can unlock them through gameplay and then get their weapons or you get them automatically after you get one of their weapons. So because I got a weapon here for Squall, uh, I'm going to leave all this. We don't need to worry about all of that. So after you get, uh, after because I got a Squall weapon, I unlock Squall. Because I got a Lightning weapon, I unlock Lightning. So the different tiers of, there are different tiers of weapon. Some are stronger than others. Some of them augment your existing abilities. Some of them grant brand new ones. And some of them are exceptionally powerful ones. In order to make the most of a character, you're going to want all of their gear. Like all of it. So at least one of every copy of their weapons. So if we go into the draw info here, you can see that burst weapons are like the highest rarity gear. These are very, very strong and they give you an entire sort of damage phase that's unique to the character. Then you have LD weapons and EX weapons, both of which grant brand new abilities. Uh, LDs are slightly rarer than EXs. And then you get five star weapons, which are used to augment already existing abilities. 
So as I said, with re-rolling, part of the reason that you do it is because there are often multiple banners that have free draws on at a time. So Kane here is brand new. He's been released with a brand new mechanic, which is the FR mechanic. And I have actually also released a video on the mechanics of that as well. If you would like a link to that, I'll leave that in the description box too. So we'll do our multi draws here as well, and we'll see what comes out of that. If it's a blue orb, it's very unlikely that we've gotten anything particularly noteworthy. So we've got three five star weapons. And we can use those if we don't want them for any particular reason to augment other five star weapons. But there's nothing particularly major here to, to speak of. So if you're after Kane, for example, and you wanted the, the rarer gear, this would be a good time for you to perhaps consider re-rolling. But there's more, so we're just going to keep going and do these extra banners as well. Because Warrior of Light is featured here as well. So here we got... Something like Pinello's uh, rarest current weapon, we got one of Warrior of Light's weapon, and we got another one of Pinello's weapon. So these are all useful. This is probably not an account I would keep. It's very sparse, there's nothing really major. However, there are certain times when you start playing these games where uh, more gems are given out for like just for, for gifts. And this is uh, being played at a time where new player campaigns are active, but we have to play a little more in order to actually benefit from that campaign. We get 30,000 gems for fi finishing all of chapter one. So by finishing all of chapter one, you'll unlock a load of stuff. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and do that. It's just a few very, very simple fights. Don't have to worry anything about that. But after we've done that, we can then start looking at crystal levels and quite how much they change the game. So after you've finished chapter one of the story on its easiest difficulty, while the previous point that I spoke of after the Iron Giant and acquiring Saz is the uh, earliest point that you can do re-rolls, it's not always the best. It's really good if you have uh, or you're coming into the game at a point where loads of free stuff is being given out But any other time you're probably gonna have to wait until the end of chapter one So here it asks if you want to batch download updates because it will help the game speed up in general Because you're not having to download any everything every time you press a button However, it does take a while to do this because there's a lot of data in this game So for the purposes of this video, we're not gonna do that right now So the world map can be done like there's lots of different events and stuff that you'll see all down here But the reason that I'm bringing this up here is because because of this particular slide here. So once you finish chapter one, all allies level and crystal strength is raised to level 70 and all summons are raised level 20. So once you finish that chapter one, it'll introduce you to summons exactly what that is and what they're used for. So you get every summon that's been released except for the Spirit Moogle summon, which was released as an April Fool's joke. It doesn't do anything. You haven't missed out on anything. Now level 70 sounds like a lot. And the reason for that is that all characters have had a heck of a journey in the four years that Decidio Opera Omnia has been, been out. So, starting from level one just kind of feels superfluous. However, I'm going to show you using Warrior of Light the difference between what happens in those tutorial missions and what a character's kit actually looks like. One of the benefits of, of these level 70 bonuses, right after you've unlocked all those bits, is you'll see that your rank here will go from 4 to a much higher number, depending on how many characters you've either re-rolled for or haven't. And because of this, your rank goes up one for every 10 levels across all characters that you own. And the reason this is relevant is because it allows you to gain gems and stamina refill potions because while stamina is not a big part of this game, it is used in certain places. But you're going to get 100 gems for every rank you get. So for every new character that you get, you're going to get gems for it. And you don't get a small number of them if you do it all in like a big lump. So you're going to get characters by playing through the story also by playing through some of these missions here called Lost Chapters. There's 91 of them for a start, <laughs> to the point where it's having to sit there and load them all up for me. But for each one of these that happens, there is a new character for you to acquire. The story will give you loads. You can make all of these characters allies. You won't get much of their gear, but it's still worth unlocking all of them because you'll get all those juicy resources, rank ups, all of that good stuff for you to acquire. 
By going into the missions tab as well, you'll see that there are other missions that have been cleared. And this is all just stuff that's going to help you to acquire loads of free stuff. Where like, at the moment there is a campaign that gives some extra bits and pieces. Like power stones, which are used to limit break weapons and make them stronger. As a way of substituting having to pull for duplicate weapons. And you can acquire more of these by selling 5 star weapons that you don't need. And then you get all of these different coloured crystals as well. That are used to level characters up even further beyond the 70 mark as well as chocobo feathers these are xp boosters there's just tons and tons of items here that you can use to acquire and then you can just get these missions here and also by going into these panel missions which are chocobo panel missions these are a recurring event that happens regularly for most people but as you start the game you get some extra ones of these they're like little bingo boards essentially that once you clear the missions you'll get a bunch of free stuff so you can then benefit from all of that just by silly little things like editing your message checking the game guide raising some character levels all sorts of little bits and pieces like that and for every line that you finish you get additional rewards like gems armor tokens power token all sorts of extra resources there are a lot of of resources in this game different ones used for different things my biggest suggestion to you would be to take things slow not use all of your resources until you understand what each of them do individually and if you're not sure feel free to ask questions like i said we have a very very flourishing community in dffoo if you'd like to join up in my particular community there are links in my discord links to my discord down below if you want to check that failing that there are lots of other content creators as i said earlier in the video you can go to reddit there's lots of places where you can go to find information so going into a quick fight with the Warrior of Light, Rem and VV, the ones that we've started with, just with the level 70 bonuses that we've had, you can see here that you have a summon icon here, and all of these summons have just been made available to you. Each of them has different effects depending on which one you take with you, and there are events that you can use to uh, increase the level cap of these summons and how much damage they deal, what their effects are, increase all sorts of things. And these summon trials are actually a very lucrative way for you to gain resources and are something that are very, very important when it comes to strengthening your characters. So for argument's sake, I'm going to take Ifrit here, who at this point in time, raises my attack by 20% per max HP, obviously meaning that my characters deal more damage. And if you look here, you have your friends list. Now, this is just, uh, because we've not obviously used this account before, we don't have any friends on this account, but basically you can see characters that are used here, characters that people have put up, an important thing to note here is there is an element of FOMO that goes into a lot of gacha games and friend units are a prime way to do that. So obviously if you use a, a, a friend unit, try not to let it sway you from your existing plans for characters that you either want or just try not to let yourself be influenced by those things. But the benefits are there because you can also use friend units for characters that are much stronger than what you currently have at the start of the game and just use those and they will carry you actually very far because by bringing a friend unit in, you can then use that player's character for three turns if neither one of you is following the other, five turns if both of you are following one another and therefore being friends. So not gonna take any units here um, or follow them or anything like that because I just want to demonstrate what a difference is with Warrior of Light at level 70 compared to what he would have been otherwise. So we'll just use general attacks. You'll notice that there's a lot more skills all of a sudden and we don't need to worry too much about that. They're obviously going to do a lot more damage because they're higher level. But if we take a look at, say, Warrior of Light Shining Shield here, you'll notice that it does a lot more different things. You'll notice there's red numbers everywhere. It's like, oh my god, what's going on here? All you really need to know is that the reason that I said that bravery, HP, etc. is really important is because as the game has progressed, that kind of system is different to what it was when it first came out. So what you just saw there with Warrior of Light's Augmented Attack, it ultimately does the same thing and you can hover over abilities to check what they do, etc. And when with the power creep we currently have now, if an attack is typically not doing multiple bravery attacks and HP attacks in between those bravery attacks, it's typically not very good. So just a bravery attack on its own or an HP attack on its own just doesn't cut it by a lot of today's standards. So something like Cure, which doesn't really do a lot on its own, 
isn't particularly great, whereas something like Throw Buckler is going to do multiple counts of HP and bravery damage. So you can see that there's a difference there. So how is it that we get to that point? Let's take a look at the character augmentation screen and see what's happened there. So when you load up by clicking on your party member's screen or anything like that, this is the screen that you're going to see. So with levels, crystal levels in particular, you will unlock additional abilities that give you extra stats, but also change the properties of your moves and passive abilities of your characters. So just by the level 70 stuff that's gone across the board, you'll notice that by clicking on this level and crystal strength passives, which is the passives that are linked to your level and your crystal level, note that your XP level and your crystal level are separate from one another. The crystal level is what's gonna give you all those juicy passives. Your level increase is literally just stat gains. That's all that is, it's all you need to worry about. Of course, you're gonna to wanna to max them both out. It's very, very easy to do. You just take characters through various events or use the chocobo tail feathers that you were given in order to increase the level further. But luckily, everyone's been increased to 70 already. So by going into this, you'll see all of this text, all of this craziness, what's going on here. So basically, by equipping weapons and armor, you are given a maximum CP rank rating, depending on how strong the weapon is or armor is that you're using. So that's gonna increase the limit of the number of passives that you can equip. So all of these do various different things. So initial bravery, attack, initial bravery being how much bravery you recover from after you've done an HP attack, because obviously you go to zero bravery attack after you've used an HP attack normally. Um, then you've got defenses, which is obviously very good for Warrior of Light, HP changes. Then you're gonna get passives like class change here, which increases all of your stats if Warrior of Light's HP was max at the start of the last wave, so the current wave of enemies. And yes, this does count for when you're starting a fight as well. But the ones that you wanna really be looking at are these extension abilities in orange, because what these do is inherently change the abilities that you have into those crazy bravery and HP dumps that you were seeing just a moment ago. So by pressing auto, I can equip most of these, some of them, but not all of them because I just don't have enough CP to equip them. But by going back and changing the weapon, so we'll equip the we weapon that we got earlier. I did do a few extra pulls just to see if I got anything interesting uh, on Warrior Light, because like I said, I'm not gonna be keeping this account. He's just very good for me uh, to tutor this with this particular video. We'll go in with his dual rapier here because it has the most CP available at this moment in time. If you'd like to know more, about weapon passives, how to acquire them. I will leave another link for a video that I made a while back about how to like use weapons efficiently, use power stones to make sure that they're at the best place, possible place they can be, and which ones that you're actually able to get rid of after you're done with them, because that's gonna be a very important thing going forward as well. So we're just gonna equip this one for the purposes of showing you what the difference is in CP there. So we can go in and now we should be able to equip everything. So all of those are equipped. So, how do I make my character stronger then? Weapons and armor are obviously one way of doing it, but if you click on this button here, the enhance button, you'll see all the different things that can be increased. Now this is a new addition to Dissidia Opera Omnia, and quite honestly, it is an absolute godsend because it consolidates all of the information for every character's passives, abilities, ways of increasing them, all sorts of different things all in one place. So the level is obviously a certain way, but the crystal strength will also increase your level cap for XP as well. So cycle quests are the missions that you use to acquire more crystals, but because we've already been given a fair few as well on top of everything else, we should be able to have a look at what we could do if we got more crystals for it. So you would need additional crystals here. So these are the tier six ones, which you would get by doing those cycle quests and by doing event quests and things like that. And you'll see that level cap increases by 10, more stats, more CP for you to be able to use on other skills and all sorts of other little bits and pieces that you will get. And once again, I will say this repeatedly over the course of this video, this is a lot. It is important to understand that an established game like Dissidia Opera Omnia does have a lot of mechanics that we've all grown with as veteran players that a new player may not understand or know. But they are all there as a, like something to take one step at a time, learn at your own pace, it's very, very important. I will leave all of the resources to learn all the intricacies of things to do. Today's video is gonna focus primarily on what to do within that first day and explain the very, very basic mechanics of the game. 
So, what do we do from this point onwards? Well, let's take a look at the world map and see what we can do. So taking a look at the world map itself, you'll notice there's a lot of red. All that means is events you haven't cleared yet, lots of new, lots of this sort of thing. Uh, you can now select your story chapter that you're up to by clicking on the chapter list button and there are a ton of them and there's loads of resources to be grabbing from them. But let's take a look at each individual tab and explain what each of those is. So events is literally what it says on the tin, it's events. So these are time limited things that happen like you can see just here how long these events have left. So currently these are events for uh, characters that have been released recently. One has six days left, one has 13 left. Re honestly, one of my recommendations after you've done all of your tutorials and everything is to perhaps consider going through these as far as you're able because these are events that will not stick around and you can get some extra resources from doing those. Mog's Gym. Mog's Gym is absolutely imperative for newer players to, to, to play through. First thing f that you should do is going to give you more crystals, it's going to give you tutorials further on the more intricate parts of the game, buffs, debuffs, all that sort of stuff, go through this first. Anything that you don't understand through the tutorials, through things that I've explained, through things that you maybe have seen on, on other resources, or within the game itself, you can learn from these to at least get you started. And then permanent what, uh, uh, event quests you have here are the cycle quests, as I mentioned earlier, which are your methods of gaining more crystals for your characters to increase their strength. Or you could do the golden cactuars, which is a method of farming gill. Now, gill is used to level up weapons, level up uh, gear. You can, there's, that's your primary reason to use gill, but suffice to say, you'll be visiting this particular event rather a lot. Lost chapters are the events that I mentioned earlier where you can earn new characters and this is good just because they're like miniature story chapters, they're all permanent, you don't have to worry about that. Like they all, these are all characters that you can earn and unlock so you find your favourites, all of this stuff that you're able to then unlock and just continue to play with or at least just keep in your bench so that your rank has gone up and that you're available for when their weapons start to come around again. Intersecting wills, honestly, are Lost Chapters with a different name. They're slightly newer, they're like a second mini story for that particular character. So as you can see here we have Kane, Rem, Garnet, Snow. These are all characters that have had like their Lost Chapters eons ago and they're now getting a second sort of story chapter, mostly to showcase a new weapon that they've had released. World of Illusions, this is where you're going to come to farm up your summon, like summon bits and pieces, so World of Illusions Divine, World of Illusions Ultimate. These are like the events that you will use to farm resources for your summons to make them stronger and are very, very good ways of re farming resources for yourself. Carbuncle's Treasures will give you armor and ingot orbs which are used to, you guessed it, level up armor and weapons. Um, and then Radiant Artifacts. Artifacts are like a uh, in-game lottery system for extra passives that are for your characters. These aren't nearly as important as they used to be because Power Creep is kind of inflated beyond them, but it's definitely something you're gonna wanna check out at some point if you wanna get the absolute most out of your characters. Hunts are a daily event that you do on the regular. You can take a friend unit, you can do these in co-op. Yes, there are co-op fights in these games as well, and you're able to just kind of ask for a friend to help you or ask somebody in the community. Honestly, I personally really like the idea of getting a friend to play this with you and just say, hey, I'm interested in this game. Do you want to try it with me? Um, we can play together. We can play co-op and learn together and go from there. This is a really good place to do that because you want to do this every day because you'll get tokens for doing that, which you can exchange for in-game resources such as, you know, the armor orbs, tokens but realistically the main thing that you're probably going to want to pick up here are these tickets which you are what you're going to use on the gacha themselves and things you earn a lot of through the course of the game and then finally we have dimensions end and abyss which are the higher end difficulty missions that you'll want to clear over the course of time but not something you want to worry about in your first day like first few days of playing the game so the last thing I'm going to use the game to show you before we talk about just what to do on your first day generally, what some pull strategies might look like, how you might want to consider doing that, 
and some final thoughts from some uh, some friends and patrons. Let's take a look at the settings because this is something that I always think is really valuable to anyone starting a new game and something I wish people would taught me when I started is what the ideal settings kind of look like. So your user data here is where you will set your friend unit and your support character. You can have a little message to go alongside it. You can set your favorite character, all sorts of stuff, and it gives you information on what gems you have maybe paid for or anything like that. So that's where that lies. And then you get stickers, which you can use in co-op as well. Memoria Theater is something you can use to um, re-watch cutscenes you may have already seen. But we're gonna be looking at the settings here. So battle settings first. The support enemy ability order, don't worry about that. Enemy HP display in battle, you'll always want this on. Party member details display, you're going to want to hide all of these bits and pieces because what happens if you don't hide these is you get this massive Star Wars scroll, we used to call it before we actually had these settings come on, of just what passives each of your characters has, what gets triggered every turn. It's unnecessary, like in by and large, because you're able to look at what buffs or debuffs that are inflicted on any enemy or character at any given time by like long pressing over any singular character and that's gonna tell you everything that you need to know. Not this massive scrawl of text that's just not gonna make any sense. Sound wise, obviously you can do what you want to with that. Draw auto sale, I honestly have both of these turned on because I don't wanna have to go into my inventory and sell off all of these bits and pieces individually over time. Some people may choose to keep the four star ones off because they do have passives for some characters, but they're honestly so menial by today's standards that they're not worth worrying about. And it's only really a thing for completionists if you're really worried about it. Notifications and power settings. Power settings I would have on normal because if you have like some phones will set this to low by standard and it's going to cut your frame rate in half. So I would only set this up if you really don't have a phone that can probably handle it, but it, you will notice a difference. So if you're set to low, chances are your phone can probably handle normal or your device can probably handle normal. And if it can't, you can always set it back down again. And other than that, that's pretty much all we have to talk about when it comes to the settings. The last thing I will mention over this period in general is if you come down here, you'll get to data backup and deletion. So once you have an account that you're happy with, for the love of all that is holy, please link it to either your Google Play, your Apple, your Square Enix Bridge. You can have an account for that if you want to change, like be able to play over multiple devices or anything like that. But what happens if you play on multiple devices, if you link it up to Google Play, I do this, is it will simply ask you to transfer all of the data from one device to the other. It's very, it's perfectly safe to do. It's not gonna delete everything. It's just gonna tie it to your Google Play account. So once you have an account that you're happy with, definitely do that. And then if I would, like I said earlier, consider the batch download as well so that you can have everything just on, on tap. You don't have to worry about loading screens like we saw when we did the pull earlier because it's loading every individual thing as it comes. And then that way you don't have to worry about that either. So in terms of your very first day playing the game, my recommendations would be as follows. When you get to a point where you want to re-roll if you want to do that for a particular character, at the point of this video being released, your priorities will probably want to be Garnet and Kane. They're both very, very powerful characters that last for a very long time. We have the fortune of having forethought into the Japanese version of the game, which is eight or nine months ahead of us, so we can see vaguely how long these characters are going to last for. And trust me when I say both of those two last for a good long while. And if you're not sure what's being, what's like kind of about at any given point, always ask because those two characters may not be relevant by the time this video is being released because their banners will have gone. But always ask around, is this character good? Or if you want to, you can always watch my Should You Pull videos or any other content creators as well. So you can just always ask questions through that. So once you've done that and you've got an account you're happy with, you've finished your chapter one, you've got everything you want to do that way, LD characters are level 70, Mog's, Mog's Gym. Mog's Gym should always come first. Absolutely get that done, out of the way, learn everything you can from that. And then once you've done that, playing through the story and just enjoying the game and the characters you've acquired would be my next priority. Don't worry too much about the highest end content. Just learn what each of your characters does because it is quite overwhelming to begin with. And you're just gonna sort of naturally assimilate the information that's come out of that. If you go into World of Illusions, World of Illusions is the event, are the events which will use stamina, but quite honestly, because of your characters get level 70, your ranks will be higher, and you'll acquire so many SP potions, SP being the energy that stamina 
like is akin to, you'll get so many of those that you won't have to worry about stamina for a very long time as long as you wait until you've gotten some characters before you do that. You could go through the lost chapters and unlock characters that way and like fill out your roster. But like I said, just be aware that you're not gonna necessarily use those characters unless you have all of their gear. Then go through all of the chocoboard missions. Going through the chocoboard missions will give you so many sort of resources, including a free LD of your choice. LDs being one of the rarer weapons that you can acquire right now, and some characters su survive solely on their LD-based kit. So if you want to go with that, a recommendation for me would be Selfie. If you want somebody that's just all purpose, very, very powerful. If you want to know more information about that, then there's lots of resources out there about Selfie, but she is extremely powerful and has been for quite some time and will help you through a very large amount of content by being a support based character that happens to enable an awful lot of damage from your other party members very easily. And obviously you'll want to pick up one of each of her weapons, so her 15 CP weapon, her 35 CP weapon, so the two regular gold weapons, then her EX, which is the one that has the shiny background, one of the shiny backgrounds, and then the LD, which has the other kind. So that's the character you probably want to acquire using those resources because you can only do it once unless you start paying money, and even then, sometimes you're not able to. Then once you've done that, then you want to start working on your summons, getting them leveled up because they're going to help you throughout the mission, throughout various different missions. And by the time you've done all of those, you should hopefully have enough of a grasp of the game that you can start looking at the higher end stuff, like maybe doing some of the like limited time events, things like that before you start really grasping the game and its intricacies. In terms of the structure of a fight in the higher end difficulties, as it were, you get multiple difficulties. You get Chaos, which is just a simple fight. The only thing you have to really worry about are the mechanics of the fight itself. You get Lufenia, which is a, a style of fight where you have to bring a specific type of character that can fulfill the conditions of a countdown orb that if you don't fulfill those conditions, the bosses will instantly kill you. And then you have the new one, which is Shinryu, which now works around FR weapons, which are brand new to the game this week. Honestly, a lot of people are still working stuff out with that, so don't stress too much if you don't know the information about that one. I do, however, have a video all about FR weapons as well, which I'll also leave in the description box below if you want to learn more about that. The, the, uh, the mechanics of that involve a gauge, which fills up on both your side and the enemy side, and different mechanics will occur when the gauge fills up beyond certain thresholds. The things that these fights will all have in common is that fights will typically get harder as you progress through them. As the boss's health gets lower, you'll find that their stats increase, you'll find that their like attacks get stronger. A lot of them have unique things that they do, like they'll jump turns or they'll do all sorts of crazy stuff in the middle of fights. So the reason I mention this is because if you get your summons, some of your strongest attacks, like bursts like that I mentioned earlier, things like that, you'll typically want to kind of save those for the halfway point of the fight or beyond until you get really comfortable with it. But beyond that, you, it's all about team composition. So you're going to want, of using the three characters that the tutorial gives you is a good example. Having a damage dealer, a support character, and then like a techie character are the ways to go about it. With your damage dealer, so Vivi in the example shown by the, the, the tutorial, it would be your primary damage dealer. Warrior of Light would be your like sort of supporty character that has tanking capabilities and abil the ability to make sure enemies only attack him. And Rem would be like a techie character that has healing capabilities, or maybe you'd switch those around. Like you'd like she has healing capabilities, the ability to swap turns with other characters, and obviously with 150 plus characters in the game, all of them have different sort of unique quirks to them. So you'll be able to kind of team build to your own specification. So I have a couple of extra resources that I'd like to talk about within this video as supplementary things that you should read if you haven't already because they are fantastic resources in text format that you can sort of digest at your own pace and these are resources that I use when I make my videos very very frequently. So the first one that I want to talk about here is going to be the Tombri Troop. Now the Tombri Troop are very well known for making infographics on each character as they come out but they have a phenomenal, phenomenal beginner's guide that goes into even greater detail than all the things I've explained here. If you're interested in the game, there's different, like here we have beginner priorities, things that you should be doing as you start the game. DFFOM mistakes, so things not to do, which is always a very important thing to be looking at. 
And if you want to know more about weapons and armors, I would encourage you to pause the video as I show you these next couple of slides that come from the Tombree Troops website because they, in combination with the video that I released a while back, and I will leave a link in the description box below, should explain how uh, maxing out a weapon, acquiring the passives from those weapons to even further strengthen your characters and get the most out of the gacha mechanics as best you can. So this here is the weapon guide. So if you want to kind of like screenshot this or pause the video here then it will teach you exactly which weapons you should be equipping as well because you won't you obviously can only equip one weapon at a time and the same goes for armor so if you wanted to sort of pause the video here have a read through here as to what these different pieces of armor are then that's going to help you as well and like i said they have tons and tons and tons of infographics on specific characters so i very Another website that I use a lot is this one here, which is DissidiaCompendium.com. Again, links in the description box below. Much like the Tombree Troops infographics, this is going to give you a rundown of all of the characters, events, weapons, all sorts of other stuff. They have their own like guide as well. There are lots and lots of resources out here. I'm just going to show you the ones that I use frequently in my videos. And if you click on one of the characters here, this will give you all of the information about where they come from, what their reworks are if they happen. One of the nice things about Dissidia is the fact that a character after you've pulled them often becomes relevant again because they often get updated to like whether they get a new weapon. Sometimes even when they don't and they get new stuff that you don't even have to pull for, that you can just go in and use a character you've really enjoyed again and then be relevant for current content again. And this will give you a rundown on all of the character's moves, all the variants of their moves, what the various buffs do, because the game isn't the best at displaying like buffs and debuffs. This is kind of the iconography you can expect to see, but it doesn't always explain exactly what they do unless you long press on them and then you have to read it all over, like, over and over and over again. And that's going to help a lot as well. So that's a great website. Those two in particular, I would heavily recommend heavily recommend there's lots of other resources out there as well but the other ones that i honestly use most are reddit i use reddit posts to search up particular characters certainly on the jp side of things when i want to look up what a character does and we don't know about it yet for the global version or when i want to see an event that's been played through and i part i don't know and i'm thinking if i'm researching a video for example oh who gets used most in this to what, how can I recommend these characters? I can go to Reddit, search up the event that I'm looking for, and then I'm gonna see all the different people who have posted their clears, what they've done, whether they're gonna pull on a character as well, and that helps me inform my should you pull video research, things like that. So Reddit, fabulous resource. And then finally, YouTube. YouTube, if, you can't, if, you, if you're not sure about a lot of stuff, you're already on the right website for it. By watching videos on YouTube, you can watch people uh, sort of discussing their thoughts on characters. All of those sort of, all those content creators I linked at the start, they will give you help as well, whether it be through discussions or just posting their clears of content. If you're not sure, just search in the event you're trying to do with the difficulty that you're trying to do into YouTube. Someone will have uploaded a clear for it. And if you have a characters that match them, then you can always copy what they're doing if you're not sure. Or if you can kind of think, I like that, but I might do it a little bit differently. It'll give you at least a general idea of how to tackle the content you're looking for. Or you could just watch some of my stuff if you want to. I cover every event as they go live and I do my own clears and it's hilarious because I fluff up sometimes and I make mistakes. And, you know, but I ultimately get every event done like on the day of release. There are lots of other content creators that do that as well. Should you pull videos from me and other content creators are also designed to help you navigate the world of gacha. If you certainly, if you've not done it before, because it's a very, very easy thing to fall into. And in my eyes, I try to guide people into knowing the pros and cons of characters so that they know whether it's worth them spending their resources on them. Now the very last thing that I'm going to touch on in this video before I love you and leave you so that you can go and enjoy Dissidia for yourself is I asked some of my patrons over on Discord so to give one piece of advice to any new player coming into Dissidia Final Fantasy Opera Omnia. We do know that a lot of people are recently coming over from Final Fantasy Record Keeper after its end of service was announced, which is very sad. But one of the things that I like about the community here is everybody is going to be giving you advice, regardless of whether you've come from another game, regardless of whether you've never even played a gacha style game before, or a Final Fantasy game even. So let's take a look at some of the things that have been said here. So Sakai says here, don't worry about spending money. Yes, there is a premium 
Alien Pass that will give you some bonuses, but all in all, this game gives you a lot of free stuff. You can absolutely go through everything comfortably without spending anything. This is very true. Like, you get a premium pass for the first one, for a month, so your first one, uh, by just for free, for playing the game. And that that's something that is designed, obviously, to give you a taste of what you could have if you had it every month. And then obviously you have to start paying for it. Very, very clever marketing tool. But you don't have to use that. You can use it because it will double the number of points that you get when farming like summon points and things like there's various benefits to it but by and large you don't need it i use it because as a content creator for it i'm quite happy to invest in it as part of my business but most people don't need to there are so many free resources it's crazy Jamakai likely like or likewise says take the time to do your summon boards for your characters when you are able not only does it make your characters really strong by giving them stat boosts it also provides a lot of resources like gems tickets and guard tokens guard tokens being a resource that you exchange for different pieces of armor to make your defenses stronger and to give your characters more CP uh, Alpha Prime says one thing I'll say for players coming over from RK is to trust the community OO has one of the most helpful and friendly communities surrounding it and any new players arriving in spite of RK's demise will benefit immensely from people like Joe and other content creators for the game as well as a general, general disorder, uh, discord but uh, plus most have inside knowledge in regards to global following JP content like I said earlier we have foresight on the JP content if you want to join in with the conversation ask questions all of my patrons have been very, very wonderful, and I'm pointing in the wrong direction. I've been very, very wonderful about being welcoming to new players. I myself obviously try and join in with the conversation. And my community on Discord, I can speak for other people as well. Uh, like, their communities are all going to be wonderful. Find some Discords to join in. Ask questions. It's okay to not know stuff. Lighthusky says, the game's super generous with resources, but use gems for must-haves or favorites and tickets for anything else. Tied in with this, just try to use tickets or just use gems. Don't mix resources. This is a thing you'll see very commonly, to not mix your resources, tickets and gems. I agree with this to a certain extent. With gems, because there is a pity system in the game, you get G tokens every time you do a multi-pull. You can then, once you hit a certain threshold, 70k for an LD, um, 100k gems for an, uh, an FR or 125k gems for a BT, which sounds like a lot and it, it is, but hopefully you shouldn't have to hit that too frequently. Your People are encouraged not to use tickets, certainly after they've started using gems, because when you go in with gems, you will find that it's nonsensical to then go in with tickets when you could just continue using gems and pity the thing and finally get it. If you've played any other gacha that has a pity system, the same thing is gonna apply here as it does to them. I do think, however, that it's okay to try your luck with a few tickets on a banner that you know you want something from before you go in with gems, because trying your luck and trying to get away with it on a banner you know you care about and saving the resources, it's not like tickets would magically have given you something different on a different banner. So how you approach the actual pull strategies is entirely up to you. But I would very heavily suggest A, saving up gems until you have enough to do a pity. And B, not using tickets after you started with gems. Um, Hes Flare Star says, do not stress meta at all while starting up. Using your favorites and slightly dipping into banners will carry you far. Don't be intimidated by veteran posts or feel like you have to pull the same way the vets do. DFFRO is a game you can absolutely take your time with. Could not stress this enough. Very, very good at keeping the mentality clear for just new players. Play at your own pace. The story doesn't take stamina. Just go slow. Make sure that you look for the characters that you actually want and just worry about that. Don't feel like you need every unit that's released or reworked. Many of them can be skipped in favor of characters you would or could want or would enjoy. There is also something to be said about learning new favorites. I have had a lot of characters in this game that I didn't particularly care about outside of this game. And I've also had characters that I love that are outside of this game that I don't particularly like in Dissidia. So it's fine to have lots of different reasons why you would pull on a character or enjoy just various different characters. Pull selfie or fill your friends list with selfies. Selfie is very, very useful. Certainly for new players. That's why I recommended her for the free LD of choice that you get. You're going to want to get her kit. If you really don't like selfie, you could pick up somebody like um, Kurosame, who has a lot of synergies with certain other characters and has a really good call ability, which is something you'll get to as you get on later on. Or there's there are a few other recommendations, but selfie feels like the easiest one to recommend. 
Uh, again, patience is key. I think I saw someone on Reddit say that the first year of playing will be your toughest because it's all new and you don't have the resources to go in for everything. Picking and choosing your spots is um, picking and choosing your spots is very important in that case. Do your research, but above all else, take your time and don't get ahead of yourself. And then finally, Neku here says, don't stress if you don't know the resources to pull for a specific unit you want right now. Every character's kit gets re-released eventually. Don't rush the content. Take your time and especially enjoy the game. While somewhat simple, DFFMO storyline is entertaining and the interactions between some characters from different games is a good fan service you won't want to miss and never be afraid to ask. So again, all of these people have reiterated stuff that I've always, uh, that I've, I've been trying to tell new players as well. Never be afraid to ask questions. I cannot stress that enough. So that's going to be all for my beginner's guide for DFFOO. I have glossed over a lot with this particular video, like weapon systems and um, like sort of intricacies of battle and what each ability does. If there's any particular sort of area of Dissidia Opera Omnia you want me to focus on more and you don't see it in the, uh, the description box down below, either through myself, through Tombry Troops, Fabulous Guides, Dissidia Compendiums, or anywhere else's, then let me know in the comments below and I will consider making a video for it if, if that's something that people want. Um, how to make a team. I've actually made a, t a video on that as well. There's lots of videos that I will post down below. A lot of them are older, but the core kind of relation for them still applies to today, just maybe not the specific characters that are spoken about in it. But like I said, feel free to ask questions in this video. Share this out with friends if you're already a player for Dissidia and you'd like to help somebody get involved in it. Because uh, I think the nicest thing that I can see is somebody who already plays the game, introducing it to a new friend and just going, hey, you might want to try this. And then taking them through a video just like this one and explaining in greater detail the things that I've spoken about. But I can also do that if that's something that you guys want to see. So let me know. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel and click the bell for notifications on any future videos I might be making. And welcome to Dissidia if you've not played it before. It's lovely to meet you and I hope to see you again soon. Thank you very much for watching Beautiful and I'll see you next time. Take care.